today I want to um, start a series. The Lord spoke to me about three months ago, and the Lord said, um, I want you to start a series, and you're going to call it First. So today is going to be sort of foundational to what we're going to be covering, but it's a very, very important message. First things first. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come reverently before your word because it's your word. And uh, you spoke it and you uh, inspired it and you've uh, communicated it. And I pray today, Lord, that as your word goes forth, that my lips, Lord, will be used to communicate your word with clarity, with accuracy, anointed, I pray, Lord, that your word will find hearts that are anointed and, and a soil that is receptive to receive the seed of the word of God. And Father, I thank you that your word will not turn void to you, but it will accomplish the purpose for which you have sent it. Father, now as we speak the word, I bind every devil and every force of darkness that would try to oppose the word of God. And I declare in Jesus' name that every mind and every heart is free. I declare an open heaven over this place. And I thank you that your word will not turn void to you. It will accomplish the purpose which you've sent it in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Lay your hand on your heart and say, Lord, my heart is good soil. I'm ready for the seed of the Word of God. Amen. 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 All right. Now, I'm starting today a series that I believe will, will be quite crucial and will answer, you know, many questions regarding, of, regarding things like why things happen the way they do sometimes in our lives, you know, how to build a life that really works, how to assemble the pieces when you've experienced chaos. How to start the right way. You know, uh, it's, it's a reality, an unfortunate reality that some people didn't, didn't have a great, the greatest of starts in life. But you know what? In God, God is a God of second chances. We can always start again. So we're going to be looking at, you know, things that will answer all of these questions. And I believe they'll put a great foundation on how to build a life that is like that life that Jesus talked about, abundant life and overflowing. But I want to start with you in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. And Jesus is talking about life. He's talking about worry, he's talking about many things, but he's talking really about life. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat on, what, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So many people wanting to find the meaning of life and what life is all about. And Jesus is giving us some, some really nuggets, some things we need to chew on and think about and and we're going to be exploring that over the next few weeks. Verse 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all of these things. But, but seek first. Everyone say, first. first. I, I would encourage you every time you find a first in the Bible to underline it, to highlight it, because... It's there for a very important reason. It's there to give you uh, uh, some really important advice for your life. And, and, and if you keep first the things that God says, keep first, then I tell you what, there's many blessings that are going to follow. There's alignment in your life. There's, there's meaning. That it's, it's wonderful. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, how do you do life well? Have you ever thought about that? Because you know what? This is the only life we're ever going to live on this side of eternity. And one day, you know, after we come to the end of our physical life, we will find, you know, we will find ourselves in eternity. But as far as this life, this is the only shot we're going to have at it. This is the only life we'll ever live on this side of eternity. You know, eternity will come. Um, in, in the same week, two of, my, two of my uncles, one from my mom's side, one from my dad's side, 
passed away just this last week, all in the same week. In the same week, someone like uh, the great Billy Graham went on to be with the Lord. What a great, what a great life. What, a, what an example of a life lived to the full. What an example of a man that is so ready to live eternity with God. Um, so, but how, do you, how to do life well? Some people have a bit of an uncomfortable relationship with, with life. They, they, they don't do life well. They, they're suffering the frictions, the, 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 the worry. Uh, and, and Jesus wrote this whole passage just to address that and, and to really explain to us how to do life well. Um, is there a clear way to make life really work and be meaningful, be peaceful like Jesus talked about, be happy, contented, fulfilling? Is, there, is, is that really, is, is that a reality or is that maybe a mirage? Is there something that, is there some scripture in the Bible that actually even promises that kind of life? Well, yes, over and over again, Jesus did promise a different type of life. He said, I have come to give you life and give it to the full and overflowing, the Amplified Bible says. So it's not a mirage. So if we're not living that life, then for sure there's, there's something that's kind of, there's something that we need to learn. There's something we need to take hold of. There's something we need to possess. There's something that we need to embrace that perhaps we haven't in order to step into that life that is meaningful, a life that is full of the peace of God, the shalom of God, and, and a life that is overflowing. Amen. Because that's what Jesus promised. So... Um, to many people, their philosophy of life probably could be summarized in the words of, uh, of Forrest Gump. I mean, if you remember Forrest Gump, <laughs> I hope you didn't watch the movie. But, <laughs> but Forrest Gump, you know, his philosophy of life is, my mom used to say that life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. In other words, life is unpredictable. Life is random. Life is full of unexpected turns. And is that maybe your philosophy of life? Or could it be that maybe life is not so much like a box of chocolates, but could it be that perhaps life is a bit more like a box out of an Ikea store? You know? Uh, and and I, I have great admiration for Ikea stores because I didn't have until I started putting, you know, one of those furniture things together, and I, and I saw how much thought goes into it, how much planning, how well designed, how everything comes together. You know, uh, could it be that perhaps life is more like a, an Ikea kind of box that is given to us, well designed, masterfully conceived, piece by piece, and then God give it to us, and God says, now you unpack it and put it together. And that's where I think probably uh, the trouble starts, in the putting together of life. You know, regardless of your opinion about Ikea, I, you have to agree that nothing is left to chance when it comes to their products, how well they're designed, and the thought that goes into every detail. And you know what? If you do it right, if you follow the instruction booklet step by step in the orderly fashion that they say, following number one, observing what's first, what's second, what's third, you will end up with something that looks exactly like what you saw in the catalog. But I have to concede that before I admired Ikea, I had a, probably uh, uh, my own share of, uh, uh, of chaos and frustration with the flatbacks of Ikea. You know, and um, I mean, I, 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 there were times I, I ended up assembling it and, and the, the end result was something that looked more like a, a Picasso sculpture rather than the thing I had seen in the booklet. You know, there's someone there that sympathizes with me. Amen. Uh, all right. Anyone else out there that has tried that? You've been there, done that? And you know what? What went wrong? Was it, was it that the manufacturer didn't, you know, came up with a really poor design and, and the instructions weren't clear and, and they're at fault? Well, there were times I thought about that because I put things together and in the end there were parts that were missing. I'm like, but this still looks like a table, but... 
Why, what is that? And, and, and I'm thinking, well, maybe they're just being generous and they left all these other parts just for us to kind of play with them and just, you know. But maybe you understand, they were, I mean, no, it's, it's obviously something went wrong. And it wasn't so much the, a, a design fault or the manufacturer's fault. It was the fact simply that I didn't even bother to check the instruction booklet. Because we men, we don't do booklets. We don't check the instructions, the directions. No, 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 that's not us. Amen. <laughs> and, you know, and, and yet each pack comes with a booklet from the manufacturer describing you know, in an orderly fashion, step by step, in a, in a, in, in, you know, with drawings and everything, just in case you can't read you know, drawings, you know, how everything should come together so that you can achieve the desired result. Now, I just wanna, I'm saying all of that to say this to you, that God has, a, God has a plan for our lives, masterfully designed, conceived. And you know what? He has given us an instructional manual that we often also disregard. I mean, it's not as if, you know, we ended up on the planet, and, and yet, you know, God has actually given us, and, you know, His instructions, God has even come himself to the planet and said, guys, this is how you're going to attain to this life. These are my instructions to you. First, seek the kingdom of God. Is right, and, and, and he put things in order for us. And he said, what should come first in order for us to assemble life properly, in order for life to make sense, in order for life to look that which we dreamed of, that which we thought in the catalog of our dreams. But maybe to some of us, life didn't turn up anything like we saw in the catalog. Maybe there are even scriptures we see in the Bible we're like, well, I've never had that in my own life. And yet, maybe there's a good chance that we're not experiencing because we haven't really checked the instructions or we have disobeyed. The very, it's one thing that I've noticed about that is that you really have to start with the first. Number one, I've tried. I've tried doing it the other way. I ended up actually putting nails through it and things that were never part of the construction of it in the first place. Amen. Anyone out there with the same experience? Yes. No, just me. Okay. Well, just pray for your pastor. So God has a plan for our lives. But sometimes we ignore the steps. First, what should come first? What should come second? What should come third? And so, so our opening text shows us Jesus addressing the stress, the worry, the general discomfort that sometimes we experience in life. Jesus is aware of our frustrations when life does look like anything we saw in the catalog. And God comes to us and says, okay, guys, this is where you've got it wrong. And this is how I'm going to give you an opportunity for you to build your life in a way that's going to make sense to you. You have to start with this. You have to start with what's first. You have to start with what's number one. Th don't try to just wing it in your own kind of thinking and, and ability and, and think you know best. Don't be stubborn about that. Guys, just, just follow the manual. It's really easy. First. And, you know, while preparing this message and, and the messages over the next few weeks, I've come across so many passages where God clearly tells us what should be first. And that explains that just the, the disregard of first may account for many things we are experiencing in our lives that were never part of the design that the divine manufacturer, the author of this whole thing, had in mind. So first is very important. Amen? Amen? Help me preach here today. I still have one more service to preach. Come on, don't go to sleep on me today. The guys in the first service were really good. Come on. Outgood them, okay? Outgood them. Come on. So Jesus says, but first, but seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So when you know what comes first, then you can assemble life properly. And here's a few reasons that lead to discomfort, stress, and worry in life. Uh, uh, number one, ignoring the manufacturer. You know, he's the author. The author knows how to put this whole thing together. You know, the Bible says in Acts 3.15 that he's the author of life. You know, in Hebrews it says that he's the author of our faith. He's the author. Do not disregard the author. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever checked, you know, one of those IKEA catalogs? 
And they say, designed by so-and-so. There's an author behind the design. And, and the designer knows, how, I mean, he's an engineer, guy, highly skilled, great creativity, great, and, and he knows how to put that whole thing together. He knows where everything is. So we don't know better than the author, but often we disregard the divine manufacturer. We think we can do life without him. Secondly, ignoring the manual, God's word. You know, I mean, I'm guilty of that. I am so guilty of, of, of not disregarding God's word, but disregarding instructions manuals. Um, I remember one in New Zealand, I once bought a car and the guy that sold me the car, he sat down with me and he started explaining in great detail about the, you know, every, I'm, after a while I'm like, uh, excuse me, I know how to drive this, I've got a driver's license. But you know what, it wasn't just about what was, whether I could drive it, was how, how to run that thing, how, how to service it, how, what, what goes wrong with it. I, it's just trying to, and I was compl I complete. have you ever read the manual that came with your car? No, we disregard manuals all the time. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered. And so many people, they disregard the manual, God's word. It's God's word. This is not here just to fill pages in between the covers of our Bible. This is here. These are instructions from the author of life. The one who wants you to have what he designed for you. And we are not to disregard it. And yet, you know, I, I'm amazed at how many... How many Bibles we have nowadays? I, I went to Korong the other day, and there's a, there's a men's Bible, a women's Bible, a study Bible, an Orthodox Bible, a Catholic Bible, a this Bible, a the other Bible. I mean, there's an army Bible. There's, a, there's all kinds of Bibles, all kinds of covers, all kinds of shapes and sizes, you know, big font, small font. I mean, the whole deal. It's like, and on top of that, now we have phones where we can have like 30 uh, versions of the Bible, and yet there has never been a more Bible illiterate generation than the one we are right now. And people will listen to this guy and that guy and Anthony Robbins and some other motivated professional guy and this other thing. And, and, and you know what? They, they're, they're, they're all trying to make sense of their own lives. Listen. Listen to the author of life, the designer, the manufacturer, and look into his manual what he said because what he said works. So, and thirdly, ignoring what should come first. Because nothing will fit if you don't know where to start. Nothing will fit later on. So is there perhaps a divine order to, th uh, to things that make life work? Is there a divine order? Yes, that's exactly what Jesus is saying. He's saying there is a, an order. First you do this. There is a divine order. The Bible says that God is a God of order. The Bible says that is not author of confusion, but he's a God of order. And the Bible says, let everything be done decently and in order. There's this passage in the Old Testament in 1 Chronicles 15, 14, that, that God really got really upset with, with the people because they had not consulted him as, as to the proper order of things. It's like, God, oh man, there's a right way to do it. There's a proper way to do it. There's a one, two, three step a process to get things done. And, and, and they hadn't done it. So the Bible says that God, uh, where is that? No, it's not the one, uh, but it's in the Bible. <laughs> 15, 14, anyway, <laughs> check for yourself. But it's there that God broke out because they didn't consult him according to the proper order. Now, we'll, we're going to study that later on, so don't worry about it. So, even nature has a proper order, the way God did things. Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 28. Mark chapter 4, verse 28 says, For the earth yields crops by itself first. Everyone say first. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens immediately, it puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. So, you know, even nature, even in the work of nature, we see the order of God. There's, there's something that happens first. I mean, you don't put out a seed and get there the following day and there's a whole harvest waiting for you. No, there's something that happens first and then there's something that happens second and third. So I want you to see that there is... There is a right way to put life together. There is an order. There is, there is something that needs to happen first, and then something that needs to happen second, and third, and so on and so forth. So first things first. We always need to start with what comes first. We should pay attention. And as I said to you, just underline every scripture in the Bible that says first. 
We should stop being stubborn and ignore the divine manufacturer and what he said that it should come first, second and third, instead of stubbornly trying to wing it and thinking we know better. You know, we will continue this topic over the following few weeks, but let me just say that God has to come first if we want everything else in life to work. I was contending with the Lord. I'm like, God, they know that. The Lord said, no, they don't. I said, God, they already know that. Yeah, but they don't, they don't know that. They need to be reminded. We all need to be reminded that he needs to come first in, in our lives. You know what? God first. What are the opening words of our Bibles? In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. I mean, everything started with God. If you want to build your life and, and, and assemble your life correctly and, and put all the parts that should go into, then in the beginning, right at the start of it, God. You, you may be here today and said, well, I've already started in life a long time ago. It hasn't worked for me. The great thing is I said before, you can start again. The Bible says you can be born again into this family of God. And, and God is a God of second chances and you can start again. And so you can build again. For some of us, you may have built things that probably didn't look like the, what the design ever made. Well, you can start again with God. But start with God. In the beginning, God. John started his gospel by saying, In the beginning was the Word, and, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So he, his, his two foundations for life. In the beginning, you know, God and His Word. So, so he is the foundation for the kind of life Jesus is talking about is, is really putting God first and just follow the manual, follow the instructions, follow what God has said needs to come first, second, third. Just follow the instructions. You see, God and his word are crucial to building the right life. You know, Revelation 1.11, Jesus said these words. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the First and the last. Amen. He said, I'm the first. If you don't know what should come first in, in your life, just, my name is first. I sign my documents with first. I am the first and the last. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 4 says, Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, I am the first, and we the last, I am He. In, in chapter 44, verse 6, it says this, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the, help me, first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. I mean, you know, people create gods. There's all kinds of things that may be gods in people's lives. But God's saying, you know what, those are not gods. I am God. There's no other one out there. I am the first. Uh, chapter 48, verse 12. Listen to me, O Jacob. Just, I don't know, I may, you may not be called Jacob, just, just listen to me. <laughs> uh, whoever you are. Dina, listen to me. <laughs> Ivana, listen to me. <laughs> um, just the person next to you, if you know their name, just say, listen, listen to God, listen to God. <laughs> listen to me, O Jacob. And Israel, my called. I am he. I am the first. Everyone say first. Yes. And I'm also the last. I love this passage in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have, that in all things he may have the preeminence. That in all things he may have the preeminence. Touch the person next to you and say, Your eminence. <laughs> Your eminence. <laughs> there is one that should be preeminent in your life, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Because some people, they really think they're a big deal. You know what? The big deal, it really is Jesus. He should be preeminent. He should be before all and above all. Amen. And he should be preeminent. The Passion Translation says, holding first place in everything. 
the Amplified Bible, and this passage says this. It says, he, he is also the head of his body, the church, seeing he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place, standing first and be preeminent. That's, that's the place of Jesus. If you want life to work, then Jesus has to stay in that place where he is undisputed, unrivaled. He is the champion of your heart. He is, he is the number one, the conqueror of your heart, your affections, your soul, your mind. You are to love him with all your mind, your heart. He needs to be number one in, in your life. Amen. That's how life is going to work for you. That's what's going to make it happen for you. That's how you're going to step into the, all these things that God talks about, all these great blessings that, that the Bible talks about. And one of the things that we're going to see over the f- following few, few weeks is that every time the Bible talks about putting God first, there's always a blessing. There's always something that is given to you. Like Jesus said, if you seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things, all these things, all the, will be added. They will be given to you. There's a blessing that goes with putting God first. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was so blessed to see people, you know, coming to the conference. And, uh, and they came from far and wide. People that drove here from Bandura every day. It's quite a long drive. People that came from Geelong every day. You know what? I believe that people like that, they were blessed. I mean, Pastor, uh, Pastor uh, Rob and, uh, and Jeanette, they come all the way from Craigieburn. They're not going to be sad on their blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. There's always a blessing. I, I remember many times going to Africa and, and places like that and, uh, and Panama and, uh, and just seeing how easy miracles seem to be. Just right, really, really easy. I, I remember in Panama, I, I have the video of that. The, these, this elderly couple, very elderly, and they both had, you know, walking sticks and, and they both had gone blind. And, and what a blessing. One year we prayed for them. And what a blessing the following year when I went back to see these same couple. And I have the video. They had their eyes open. They were, they were, they were, I mean, they, it looked like they wanted to see everything. They, they, I'm like, whoa, are these a couple we prayed? Both of them got healed. Isn't that a wonderful thing? They were both blind. And God healed their eyes, and, and both couple, husband and wife, they could see. And, and you know, I'm like, wow, what a blessing. What, what is it about this place? What is it about these people? What is it about whatever happens in, in those places that makes miracles seem so easy? But can, you t- can I tell you something about some of those places? Like, for instance, that place in Panama, there are people that walk to that place for 10 days. To come to the conference. I mean, Pastor Robin's been there. He's heard these stories himself, haven't you? I mean, uh, in elder sharing with us how people walk days and days and days. Sometimes they just, on their way to the conference, they just drop of exhaustion, right? And, and um, I mean, do you think God was going to let them go back the same way they came? There's just no way. When you see God and you put Him first, Against your own comfort and everything else, man, you're, gonna, you're not going to miss out on your blessing. Amen. And, uh, and, and there are many times I, I wondered and I said to God, you know, God, well, what is it about this place we go to? And people, they just get miracles that things happen for them. And, and you know what? It, it's, just, it's just something that is missing in the West, something that is missing in our society. You know, it's something that's missing in many people's lives. They don't really, at the end of the day, put God first. And I tell you what, we live in a city with so many distractions. I mean, every week there's some crazy thing happening in Melbourne. The white night, the black night, the, I don't know, the starry night, the Mumba is coming, the whatever. I mean, and, and everybody in this city, they're distracted, you know. There's such distractions in, the, in this world. And many times they take, they take, the place 
that, you know, that place of Jesus in our lives should be unshakable. That place of being Him, having Him first in our lives and seeking Him first. And I mean, it should be a non-negotiable in our lives. It should be a stone that, a foundational stone that is unmoved. And Amen. amen. <laughs> help me, help me preach here today. Come on. Even if I'm stepping on your toes here today, in Jesus' name, you know. Sometimes it's just not there. Just there's way too many other gods out there, too many distractions. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain, you know, geez, these are the instructions. This is how life's going to work for you. You put him first. You know, this, it's interesting how Jesus actually tested people in this area. In Luke chapter 9, verse 59, he said to one man, it says that then he said to one other, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first. Everyone say first. Go and bury my father. Something's there that's first. Look at verse 61 and verse 62. And another one also said, Lord, I'll follow you, but... I'll follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus is Jesus not trying to be mean and try to, you know... Be horrible to these people. And Jesus not being insensitive towards someone whose father had just died. It's not about that. If, if that's your understanding of the scripture, you're misunderstanding Jesus. What Jesus is doing is Jesus just exposing, in this dialogue, is just exposing what really comes first in people's lives. And how many times, even though we may say, I'll follow you, Jesus. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll do whatever. Yeah, Jesus, I'll, but, you know, there's all these other things that happen in life. And life is full of all these other things, all these incidents, all these things that would demand our attention, demand our, our energy, demand us to be there, and, and so on and so forth. And Jesus is just exposing how sometimes he's not really first in people's lives. Because every time we go, but... Yes, Jesus, but, uh, well, what about this other thing? Or we say, it came out of their own words, the word first. Jesus actually didn't say the word first. It came out of their own words, but let me first. So I'm going to ask the musicians to get ready. We're going to just uh, go into a time of just worship in just a, a minute. But I, I remember years ago, I, I was in New Zealand, and we had this guest speaker from uh, Perth. Pastor Stevenson, I never forgot him. I couldn't remember, I can't remember the rest of the message, but I remember something that he said. Something that he said, and I wrote it down, and I, th I thought it was so, so important. And uh, he, said, he said this, he said, Jesus is not important. When he said that, I got my pen out, I started writing down something. There's a heresy. Jesus is not important. What a heretic. Uh, and, but he just carried on, he said, we have to stop putting Him among all the important things in our lives. He said, He is not important. He is central. And I never forgot that. If we say He is important, then there's all these other things that are important in our lives. But you know what? It's not important. He is absolutely central. He's absolutely central. So, I, I just want to, you know, conclude by saying that in every passage, and we're going to continue this series because, you know what, it's going to bring alignment into our lives. You know, years ago, I, I had did something to my back and uh, I was in a lot of pain. And uh, I went to a Cairo. Where's Stacey? There she is. She's, she's a Cairo, aren't you? <laughs> and, and I'll never forget, she, she said, oh, you know what? I said, well, I've got pain here and I've got pain there and I've got pain there. He said, you know what, let, let us work on the alignment of your spine. You know, there's all these other things, all these other symptoms, all these other things are just because your, your spine is out of alignment. And you know what, it's such a truth for life that if things are out of alignment, if, if, if the first thing is not the first thing and the second is not the second and, and, and if our priorities are all wrong and, and if we, everything else is out of whack. But a wonderful thing happens when you become aligned and, and Jesus is number one and God is the foundation 
the immovable stone we stand upon and we build our life upon. And He is first in our lives.